Well, if you're a real estate investor and you're looking for funding for your deals, regardless of your experience and regardless of what your banker might say, well, you're at the right place and you're on the right show. I'm going to plug you into the funding in just a second. But first, I want to welcome you to the show, especially if this is your first time. My name is Jay Connor, and this show is Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. And welcome to the movement. We are now celebrating our one year anniversary. We have thousands and thousands of downloads. I think we're knocking on 100,000 or well, more than 100,000 downloads and listens. And we do all things and talk about all things uh, related to real estate investing here on the show, how to find deals, how to fund your deals, uh, how to sell them fast. We talk single family, we talk commercial. And today we're going to be focusing on land. Uh, as you all know, that have been tuning in, I've got some awesome guests and experts they come here on the show and they talk about what their specialty is. But before I introduce you to my guest today, I want to go ahead and give you a free training, a free masterclass that's uh, here on the internet simply for you to sign up for it. And uh, what I go over on the training is how to get your deals funded with private money. And I'm not talking hard money. I'm talking private money, doing business with individuals which again is the easiest way to get your deals funded. So the website to go get the free training after this show is www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. That's J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money podcast. Well, on with today's show, I'm so excited to have my guest and wow, have I got some questions for him what really, really, you know, makes me stand up and raise my eyebrows is the success that this guy has achieved in such a short period of time. So listen to what my guest has achieved. He's been a land investor as of today's show for only two years. But since that two year time period, uh, well, he's been full time just since June 2018. He's already done $1.2 million in sales and he's done that over 152 deals. So he's a, he specializes in being a land wholesaler. So if you're interested in part of the real estate investing business to where you can control property, make a lot of money very, very quickly with little to practically no risk, you are on the right show. So he does a lot of term deals. I mean, in this short period of time, he's already got a $31,000 a month passive income where the checks just come in and he collects. Now he's based out of Chicago, but he focuses investing right now in California, New Mexico, also buys in Colorado and Florida. But since he's doing this from Chicago, that means that he can be doing this from anywhere that he wants to. And he's going to be sharing his knowledge with you and me right now, as I introduce and welcome to the show, my friend, Willie Goldberg. Willie, welcome to the show. Thank you, Connor. I appreciate you having me here. Absolutely. Willie, I tell you, man, you've, uh, got quite the story here of your success in such a short period of time. You got your passive income going on, you're controlling land. And so, you know, for those of you that are watching here on the video, Willie is entirely too young to have had this much success in this short period of time. So really, first of all, let me ask you, how is it that you even got interested in real estate investing and then uh, interested in this particular niche? Yeah, so I was I was out in the corporate world, like I'm sure many of your listeners are, and so I was I was working in investment banking, corporate banking, and, and that's kind of where I got started in my career. So post college, I, I was just I, I jumped around to a few different jobs. I was out in Charlotte, and then Boston, and then back to Chicago, a number of different jobs, and, and all those jobs were in, in banking, and, and that the field was a bit challenging. The hours were pretty tough, and I didn't love the work that I was doing. It was a lot of grueling hard work and doing a lot of work for for others and and so while I was there, I, I thought that was that really the career that I wanted to progress down and, and really spend my time with. But as, as I started to do it for several years, I realized that it didn't really suit my personality and uh, working super long hours for other people's benefit. So I, I started to listen to podcasts and just try to figure out a way in which I can get out of the, the corporate ladder and get out of the rat race. So I really just yeah kept digging in. Bigger pockets was crucial. And I found house wholesaling and, and that's kind of, so I found a few different strategies for uh, ways in which to make an active income and, and be able to quit my job. And, and I found 
house flipping and house wholesaling. That's kind of where I started. And so that, that's where I, my interest lied and where I, I originally started thinking that I was going to go down. And then I found it to be particularly challenging while I had a corporate job to go on appointments and go drive around, drive for dollars, do that kind of thing to source deals. So I, I kept digging, kept listening to other podcasts, and I found one way in which you can do everything virtually. You didn't, you can do everything behind a computer screen. You don't need to go on appointments. You don't need to deal with land, or you don't need to deal with tenants, toilets, termites, that kind of thing. And so th- what that niche was was land investing and, and pretty much flipping vacant land, which you could send out direct mail offer letters, buy property at, at massive discounts, take inventory and, and throw them on a website, do some internet marketing, and, and get things sold. So I figured it was pretty scalable. I didn't need to go on appointments, which I didn't have time to do. So I I thought the niche made a lot of sense for me. And so I I started doing it on the side while I was working in the corporate world, trying to hustle and and do what I could to scratch and claw and and find ways to make deals. And so that's kind of how I started and saw some early success. And and like you said, in in June of last year, uh, 2018, so it's been a little bit over a year since I've been doing this full time. Yeah, I, I took the leap in and have had some good success since then. So that, that's kind of how I got started. Yeah, well, you're in a really, really interesting niche uh, in this land flipping to where you're controlling it. And well, I would say, I mean, do you have any risk? I mean, what's the risk involved in this niche? So I would say in terms of niches out there and real estate niches, this has got to be one of the, if not the least risky niche out there, because for two reasons. One, you're buying these properties at massive discounts. So there's a huge, huge margin of safety. So when you're buying these, you're, you're buying, honestly, at you can buy property at 15, 20 cents a dollar, even sometimes lower. Sometimes you'll pay a little bit more, but that's, uh, that's kind of where the sweet spot is. So when you're buying property that cheap, it's hard to lose, even if, if you get into a massive recession or something like that, like 08, where the market declines 50%. If you're buying at 20% of the dollar, even if the market declines 50%, you're still able to flip it and double your money and still, still exit the position. So that, that's one way it's low, low risk. The second reason is because you're not levered. You're not taking on debt here. So you're not, you're not focused on paying interest and principal payments each month. You don't have to worry about any of that. So, so in, a, in, in, in the lots are super easy to hold on to long-term. The taxes are minimal. So in some cases, less than hundred bucks a year. So, so it's, it's very riskless to hold on to these properties. You're buying at such big discounts. In my view, it's one of the least, if not the least risky niche in real estate. Yeah. So I want to go ahead and tell my audience that uh, Willie has got a free course that we're going to give out the website to here at the end of the show. So y'all hang on here to the end of the show for the next few minutes and we'll be giving out Willie's uh, website where you can download his free course on land flipping. So you just named some of the things that appeal to you in this niche other than say single family houses or et cetera. And so in this niche, I'm just really curious, and I know my audience is too. You know, you're you're doing this business virtually, right? Totally virtual, right? Correct. So everything's behind a computer screen. Just need a laptop computer and just send out direct mail and find services to do that. So every, everything's totally. I'm from Chicago, like you like you mentioned, and everything is all my properties are elsewhere. Right. So well, first let's talk about how do you decide what markets that you want to focus in since you can do this virtually? I mean, you know, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of markets all over the United States. How do you choose one? Yeah. So there's over 3000 counties in the country and in terms of finding one that fits this niche. So I, I like to buy rural lots that are pretty away from town and Pretty much what I'm looking for is cheap markets where you can buy property at, at significant discounts, but they're, you're only spending really a few thousand bucks on a property. So there's, there's ways in which you can, you can sort lists or you could, you could determine which counties have the cheapest lots out there. So, I mean, Landwatch, there's, there's, there's a few different land websites that you can pretty much filter by acreage size. So I like to buy larger acreage. So I'll filter by, say, five acres and up and then counties that have property that are under 40 grand that's for sale on the market. And then when you do that, you can filter which states and which counties within those states have the most properties for sale. And those are the areas that you want to target because you want to go where there's already an existing market. You don't want to create a market for these cheap lots. You want to go to where there's already an existing market and just buy there and and focus there. So that's kind of a brief kind of summary, a basic summary on how to find these. It also helps to buy near relatively near big cities and warmer climates. Those, Those are some of the criteria that I look for for buying these lots. You're looking for lots that are like 
lots that are for single family? Are you looking at for parcels? Are you looking, is this all, is this all land for single family houses to be developed? You're looking at existing lots. What kind of land are you looking for? Yeah. So, I mean, there's a bunch of people in this niche that I'm in. So let, just land investing in general and, and people are doing all kinds of things. Some people are doing just buying infill lots near homes and, and specializing in a particular county. Some people like me are buying more rural lots that are larger acreage. I, I personally tend to buy lots that are a little bit larger in acreage size. Don't have to worry about any of the covenants, restrictions, uh, setbacks, restrictions, or a, anything that prevents building or you need to get gain specific knowledge on a specific city or municipality. So I like to buy larger acreage on the outskirts of town that are relatively cheap lots. And that's kind of how I think about it. Okay. So when you, when you locate, you know, these lots, you mentioned a few minutes ago, direct mail. So is, is direct mail the primary or the only way that you communicate with the seller and tell the seller that you're interested in uh, their property? Yeah. So uh, direct mail is the, is the route that I choose to utilize. And it, in a lot of other niches, direct mail is very competitive. So I know in household selling in particular, it's really hard to find deals. But with vacant land, there's, it's, it's such an uncompetitive niche that, that direct mail works just fine. And, and I have, I'm pretty much overwhelmed in the amount of deals that I'm able to acquire through direct mail. And, and, and so some other niches, acquiring the asset is the hard part. In, in our niche, direct mail works perfectly well. There's no reason to need to diversify to use SEO or cold calling or any other lead sources, lead generation sources, direct mail is very scalable and it works like a charm in this niche to, to buy property. So that, that's kind of how I've been uh, utilizing on, on the buy side marketing. Right. Well, I find, uh, I find marketing and direct mail fascinating because I've been a split tester and a marketing addict for decades and I like to test what works and what doesn't work. So when you find a list or you create a list of land owners that you want to target, do you send a direct mail piece to them one time or multiple times? So I, I will send it multiple times. I generally only hit, re-hit a list after six months or longer. But that said, I think you could do it even more than that than I'm doing. But I mean, the yield that I'm getting from a mailer in a county is generally pretty good. I'm, usually, I'm if, if I send out 2,000 units on a mailer, I'll generally buy between three to five properties. And so I don't need to hit that list again. I've already built up an inventory in that area. And I can, if I do want to hit that county again, I'll just generally hit a different acreage size. So I'll say I did five to 10 acres in one mailer, next mailer I'll do 10 to 20 acres, maybe pay a little bit more, but I'd prefer to do that rather than just re-hit the list. But I, I think you could, you could hit it more often than I do, but I, I buy in so many different counties, so many different areas that I generally don't re-hit the list too often, maybe once every six months if, if I hit it at all, re-hit it at all. I got you. And you said your focus is but not too far from large cities. Is that right? Correct. Correct. Gotcha. So, uh, you know, I'm curious about the, the amount of time, you know, you were talking at the beginning of the show about, you know, it was just a rat race you were in and, you know, you were working around the clock. And so you started doing this business while you were still, you know, full time in, in the corporate world. So when you send these mailers out, are you handling the responses from the owners of the property or do you have that outsourced to some, to an acquisitionist that uh, does your initial negotiating for you? So at this point, I'm the, what I haven't outsourced yet is talking to buyers, talking to sellers and really sending out the mail and comping properties. That's, those are really the four things that I have not yet outsourced. So at this point, I still am taking those inbound calls. Well, I know Pat live is a service that a lot of other land investors use and I, I might utilize them in the future. But yeah, currently, so I, I just sent out the mail. I answer the calls, take down the leads and, and, and start comping the properties. So you mentioned having a list that you would target from about 2,000 mailers. Is that sort of your sweet spot? You want to send out about 2,000 in a market at the time? Correct. So I think I would say 2,000 is a decent amount of letters where it should generate interest, assuming you price it correctly. And I send out direct mail offer letters. So I send out an actual offer for the properties. And when doing that, if you send out 2,000 units and you don't get a good response or you get yelled at too much, that means you probably priced it badly. But, you, but from 2,000 units, you should definitely be buying several properties from that. So out of 2,000 mailers, on average, about how many responses will you get? So I would say in terms of a total response rate, so number of phone calls or 
kind of letters you, you no, get some no, form no, of letter. Of course, back. I will say, Will, the definition of a response does include vulgarity. Yes. So, so we'll start with they raised their hand and they either said, say, because what I'm getting at is if you're doing the business yourself, how much time would be involved, you know, to handle the calls. So including vulgarity, including take me off your list, including, hey, I'm interested in talking to you. Let's see if we can put a deal together. You know, out of 2000, I mean, is it 10%? Do you get 200? Is it 5%? Do you get 100? Is yeah. it 3%? Do you get 60? So I would say it's pretty, at this point, it's, I would say even lower than that. I would say probably 2% is, is probably what you would get in terms of some, some form of response, a call or call, email, text or whatever. So about but, 40, about 40. Yeah, I think that's probably pretty, pretty average. Well, and that, I mean, and I mean, if you're getting 2%, I mean, you know, these days, of course, if, if anybody's been a real estate investor for any length of time and they've had any kind of training, by and large, they know what a yellow letter is, right? Yeah. <laughs> they know what a yellow letter is. And, you know, if you're getting 0.3% response to a yellow letter these days, you're doing pretty good because of all the competition out there. And that's one thing I love that you mentioned at the beginning of the show is, and you're answering it right here, if you're getting a 2% response rate, somewhere around 40 people out of 2,000 raising their hand, that really speaks to the lack of competition that's in this space right now. Yeah, I would say it definitely depends on the county. If you're male in a county that's pretty competitive, it'll probably it'll be even lower than two percent. So if if you're hitting a county that's not hit very well, then maybe two percent is what you could expect. But forty people calling would be a lot on a two thousand unit mailer. Like I said, I think generally speaking, you'd probably buy between three to five properties on there, and they're all yeah. I think three. Well, to five you know, properties. if you're buying three to five properties, I mean, even if you got thirty responses, I mean, you're you're actually doing deals with ten percent of the people you talk to, which is yep. great. I mean, in my world, I have to, uh, in single family houses, I need on average 15 property lead sheets or 15 information on 15 different sellers to do one deal in, in my market here in uh, single for uh, single family houses. So it's, it's interesting to compare those numbers that, I mean, would you say that's about right? You're pulling down about 10% of the people you talk to. Yeah, I would, I think it's probably reasonably accurate. And yeah, I think so. So that leads me to my next question, which is something you said a moment ago. And that is, you said, instead of just mailing a, a generic letter that says, hey, sell me your property or hey, I want to buy your land, blah, 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 blah. You're doing something really, really smart by actually putting a offer or would you call it an offer or a letter of intent or what would you call it? Yeah. So it's just like a purchase agreement, it's a one page purchase agreement. It's, it's really a formality more than anything on there. I put, I could cancel this agreement at any time for any reason. So it's just to get them, show them a number, see if you're interested at that number. So and you're if, actually sending an offer to purchase in the mail. Correct. So with well, landing, man, that's exciting. I mean, how often does somebody that's unsolic that's not looking to sell their property, they've got an offer to purchase yeah. in the mail, man, that's exciting. It is exciting. And it's a lot easier to do with land just because it's valued on a per acre basis. A lot of cases. So you just have a numeric value. You don't really need to worry about which street corner is the property located on or um, where the nearest I don't know, grocery store is, but, or pretty, you don't need to count block by block pretty much is what I'm saying. Right, right. So this is really intriguing, really. So you send the offer to purchase. I assume there's a cover letter that goes with this offer to purchase, right? Correct. You know, letting people know who you are. And all right. So a couple of questions. All right. First question is, what is your magic formula for determining what is your offer? So in other words, you know, percentage of this or value of that, or where do you start? Like, you know, in the world of single family houses, we all talk about after repaired value. So we know yeah. in single family houses, after repaired value is assuming that single family house is in absolutely gorgeous condition with granite countertops and all that. So what's your formula and how do you determine the value to even start, start the formula? So I would say the formula comes out to be around 20 to 30% of market. But the way I actually price it is I, I literally look at the cheapest properties on the market. So I'll, I'll go to these land websites, see what's say I'm doing five to 10 acres. I'll, I'll filter by five to 10 acre properties in, in the County. And then I'll sort it by the cheapest in the area. And then I will literally price it to be around half of the cheapest echelon of, of those properties. And uh, just so I know when it gets back, I know that for a fact that it is low enough. And if I get something to come back in the mail and, or someone saying they're interested that I will 
buy property at, at a really, really low price. And surprisingly enough, that, that yields quite a bit of response and I'm able to buy a significant amount of property using just that technique. Nice. Nice. So they get the offer to purchase, they get your cover letter. What is your call to action in the letter? So the call to action is pretty much sign this agreement. If you're interested in selling, sign the agreement and you can take a picture of it and text it to me. You can email it or scan an email to me. You can fax it to me, do whatever. Just get me that agreement and then we'll close the transaction within seven business days and we'll get you pretty much fast cash. So it's, I think it's pretty compelling uh, saying they could dump this property that they've never thought about for even 30 years. They inherited it. They have just been paying taxes on it. They moved out of state or whatever, and they, and they just own this property out in whatever, California, that, that's just sitting there and not doing anything good for them. So I think it's pretty compelling call to action for them. So that is a pretty compelling offer. If they, if they, want, to, if they want to sell it, they sign the agreement, they send it back to you, picture of it, text or whatever. And then your other piece of your compelling offer is that you can close in seven days. So how are you being able to close in seven days when you're wholesaling? Sure. So I'm actually taking title to these properties. So they are pretty cheap lots. So I, when I was first getting started, I, I was buying these lots for a thousand bucks, anywhere from a thousand bucks to like 5,000 bucks. So I was buying really cheap lots. At, at this point, I'm doing a bit more scale and, and buying more expensive properties, closing through title. But yeah, I'm not actually assigning any contracts. I'm actually taking title to these properties in the vast majority of cases. In some cases, I will do option agreements where I tell them, I'm, I'm interested in this property, not at the price that you're countering me at. It's generally if the counter is when I option it. And then I'll, I'll market the property and, and sell it that way when I get equitable interest in it. But for the most part, I am taking title to it. I can, a lot of times, I'm at this point, I'm primarily closing with title company. But otherwise, if it's a super cheap lot, then... I'll, I'll close it myself and, and pretty much, yeah, get the deeds just sent to the county and get them a cashier's check. Got you. Well, now if you're closing it yourself, how are you checking title? So I do my own kind of title search. I use DataTree, which is a, a software from uh, First American Title Company. And so I, I use that and I, I kind of go through their title history and, and do a quick title lien search. And yeah, just check pretty much chain of title and then check liens and just do that myself. It's not, it's not a very complicated process that I go through. Gotcha. And with our asset class, there's, there's generally not many liens because it's just vacant land. There's no banks involved. There's no structures on the property. It's, it's pretty simple. So you would say most of the times when you check the title or you're closing with a title company or real estate attorney, most of the time it is, it's already got clear title, right? Correct. Correct. Gotcha. What would you say is the range or average price point that you're buying these properties for? So I would say at the beginning, it was probably around 2000 selling for eight, eight, probably eight to 10 on terms. At this point, I'm probably spending, I don't know, between five to 15 grand selling for two, probably two to three X what, what I'm buying it for. Some, nice. In some cases, a bit more. If I'm selling owner financing, it's probably three to five X. All right. So would you say, so let's talk about your exit strategy for a moment. So you find the deal, you negotiate the deal, you take it down mostly yourself. Now I know you coach students in this niche in your coaching program. Do you have a way to coach your students on how to do this business if they don't have a bunch of money up front? Yeah. So I do generally recommend having at least probably five to 10 grand in addition to any coaching costs because I do think it's important for you to actually take title to the property. If you don't have a way to do that, I do recommend that, I mean, you can still get started. And if you have the money for kind of the funding of the mail costs, you can find a partner to fund the transaction, split profits 50, 50, or you could even buy property at a few hundred dollars and then sell them for a few thousand dollars. And I know several counties to do that. I'm happy to kind of recommend those to people, but it is, yeah, I would say generally between five to 10 grand is kind of the minimum that I would suggest, unless you want to, find a funding partner who could, who could fund your transactions. Sounds like my world of private money, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, there you go. so, so back to what we were talking about. So you got the deal, you negotiate the deal, you, you take the deal down. Now you own this land. All right. Correct. And, and I, uh, would you say most of these parcels are like just a parcel for a single family house that would not be developed? Yeah, mostly residential lots, some so agricultural residential lots, residential recreational lots. lots. Right. Correct. So now you're going to sell this lot. Yep. Right. And it sounds like your favorite exit strategy on selling these lots are to sell on terms to where you're taking a note back, you're selling it at two to three times what you bought it 
for. Yep. And now you're going to take a note back and you're going to get passive monthly income coming back in on, on that sale, right? Correct. So here's the question. And you know, everybody wants to know, how do you find your buyers? So I would say the, it really is as much of an internet marketing business as it is a real estate business. So when you, you, you take down the title to these lots and then you really just market them on your website and then across various different websites online, even Facebook marketplace crushes it these days. But really I'm just trying to drive traffic to my website and uh, get people to go to those listings. And the beauty of this business is when people go to those listings on my website, there's a button that says buy on terms and you take them to a credit card checkout where they're submitting a payment for the property and sets up automatic recurring payments so that, that I don't need to even do anything once, once they check out. And it's a pretty smooth funnel where I'm just driving people to the website, getting them to the listings and they see that button and it's a really magic button that says buy on terms and, and submit a $500 payment with a credit card. And you'd be, I guess you probably wouldn't be shocked, but there's, there's when, when you extend credit and you're offering something for 500 bucks for a, a vacant lot, people tend to gravitate towards that and they click that button. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Really. So now if someone's buying a vacant lot and they want to build a house on it, okay, how does that work if they've already got a lien against that land? So if there's a lease, generally speaking, there's not very many liens in, in like the niche in general. Like, like I was saying, the only liens there are really tax liens. That's the only thing you have to worry about and you can just pay those off. No, but um, I'm saying like when you're selling the property to yeah. a buyer, now you've got, now you've got a lien against the uh, land, I see. Right? So, so you mean they would technically put a lien on it? Well, in other words, so you, uh, in other words, are you, are you selling this land unsecured? Are you using the lot as your security? No, it's, it's my, I use it as security. So pretty much I sell them. Another great thing about this is I, I, I sell all these lots on land contracts. So pretty much they're, they're unrecorded. There's oh, no, there. no lien. No lien. There's the, the answer property. right there. There's the answer. Yeah. You're selling on a land contract. Correct. And then, and then they go to build a house on the lot. Correct. And the bank that wants to loan them money on that lot. I assume you've sold some lots to where the buyers are building houses on the lots, right? Yeah. But I would say the vast, vast majority of people are not building on the property. Oh, really? So it makes it even less of a headache. Oh, okay. So if they're not building on the lots, what are they doing with the lots? Some people move on the property. Some people just buy it for investments. And I mean, some people do build on it, but it's like in terms of the, the people that buy property and they actually get a permit and they actually build, I would say I've, I've sold, uh, like I said, probably 130, 140 of these lots on terms. And I've, there's only been a handful of them who have actually pulled permits to start building. Wow. So, so, the, yeah. so they're just they're just buying this lot as either an investment. They see it's a great deal. They see it's easy yeah. financing, and they're going, "Why wouldn't I buy this lot?" And you're and when you go to sell it, I would think since you bought it at such a good deal, they're actually buying it at either at or below fair market value, and you're offering terms. Correct. I definitely sell at wholesale prices. I, I try to exit and exit these lots pretty quickly. So uh, yeah, easy terms, cheap prices. It's pretty easy marketing strategy. Well, you've got a you've got a fascinating funnel there on the back end as well, to where they want to buy it. You clip the button, and they sign. I guess they docu sign your land contract. Yep. And now your software starts swiping their credit card every month. Yep. For, for the monthly payment, how long do you put the terms out? So the terms are my average term length is thirty five months, so just about three years. Nice. Um, so it's not very long. Yeah. And uh, do, you char do you charge an interest rate? So I, on the contracts, I put 0% interest. There's implied interest rate that I, that's calculated from though. It's about, it's about 12% for the smaller properties. And then for anything like over 20 grand that I'm selling, it's probably around eight to 10%. So it's like 0% calculated there, but you just increase the price to account for your interest that you would want to earn, right? Correct. So there's a cash price and then there's just a terms price and the terms price is obviously just higher. Right, man, fascinating. And in your coaching program, do you teach your students how to set up the back end and have the credit card going and all that and, and how to drive traffic to their website? Yeah, absolutely. So I guess the biggest thing in this business, so it's, it's real, like I was saying, it's super easy to buy property. Any like, I mean, the direct mail works like a charm. If you have problems with that, I mean, you shouldn't be in the business in the first place, but the, the only, the bottleneck of the business is the marketing and selling. And that's kind of how I've differentiated myself because I've, I've taken the internet marketing piece and I've kind of expanded on that. And, and I, I do a lot better job 
from that aspect of the business than the vast majority of land investors. And if you could figure that out and unlock that bottleneck, you're going to be able to really scale the business and, and grow it pretty exponentially. And so that I, I kind of figured that out, that piece out. And so, yeah, in, in the coaching program, I definitely share all the, the tips, tricks, tactics, and strategies that I use to uh, unlock that bottleneck in the business. Man, that is fantastic. Well, you hear it folks right here from Willie himself. He has put this program together himself in a very short period of time. He's already amassing over $31,000 a month in passive income. And if you want to learn how to do it, he can teach you as well. So we did promise him up front, Willie, that for you're going to offer your uh, free land flipping course. So uh, the website that uh, you've sent me here, it says www.freelandflippingcourse.com. That's great. Right? All right. And those who are watching uh, on video or you, one of our YouTube channels, we're going to put it right up here on the screen right here. That's www.free, F-R-E-E, landflippingcourse.com. And uh, Willie, if, uh, if the folks, I know some of them are interested, are interested in talking with you and learning about, uh, you've got one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, in this niche. You've got group coaching. Uh, you've got deal partnering uh, that you do with your students. So how, if, uh, for those that want to continue the conversation with you, how would you like for them to reach out to you? Yeah. So if you are interested in scheduling a strategy call, you're interested in the niche and you want to get on the phone with me, you can go to williegcoaching.com, W-I-L-L-I-E, the letter G coaching.com, or you can shoot me an email at willie at williegcoaching.com. Uh, those are probably the best ways to reach me. All right. So the website again, folks, is www.willie, W-I-L-L-I-E, willie, the initial G coaching.com. Or you can shoot him an email directly to Willie, W-I-L-L-I-E, Willie at WillieGCoaching.com. Willie, my lands, I'm so glad that we, you, know, you reached out to me. I, I find your subject to be very, very interesting. And like you say, I don't know anything that's lower in risk than what you're doing. So uh, parting comments before we uh, call this show a wrap. Um, nothing. I, I think it's a great niche. If anyone's interested, I would love to chat with you. And yeah, I, th I think it's really exciting. I'm very happy that I got started and hopefully I provide some value to your listeners and hopefully someone will be inspired by kind of this niche. Oh, there's no doubt about it. Well, Willie, thank you for being on. I appreciate it. And to all my viewers and listeners, thank you for tuning in here to Jay Connor, the real estate investing show. And here's to taking your investing business to the next level. And I'm wishing you all the best. Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. We'll see you on the next show. And if you're watching on uh, or listening on iTunes, be sure to subscribe and rate and review. I appreciate all your feedback. I uh, appreciate all of you listeners that have taken uh, the show to new and noteworthy. That really exploded the show. And if you're watching on one of our YouTube channels, be sure right below to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our future shows. And in the comment section below, of course, uh, post your comments, your questions. We'll get those answered as well. Thanks for tuning in, folks. We'll see you on the next show. Bye for now.